When I asked him why, you, you, you said, why are we here? And I, I asked him that very question, you know, why, why did God make me? And he gave me an answer and I couldn't understand it. And I said, I don't understand you. And he said, well, let me put it in a way that you can understand it. He said that the world is like God's garden. And God made you and everyone else to bloom in that garden and to be beautiful. And God made every one of you unique and special to uh, be beautiful in your own way. Okay, I, I understand that. I mean, that's simple enough. <laughs> and a, another variation on that question, this is much later on in the conversation, when he told me that I had to come back to the world and I was trying to um, convince him not to send me back to this world. Uh, I asked him, what would I do if I came back to this world? And before he had a chance to answer, I said, you know, I'm an artist and I would like to build you a shrine. If I were to come back to the world, I'd like to build a shrine. And I said, I'd make the shrine so big and beautiful and bizarre that people would come from all over the world out of curiosity to see what it was about. And what they would find was it would be about you. And then that would make them think about you. And that's what I would like to do if they came back. And he said, I'd rather, he said, I'd rather you didn't do that. And I said, what? <laughs> you know, like I said, people have been building shrines to you, you know, for ever. You know, there's lots of shrines. Why can't I build a shrine? I'd like to build a shrine. He said, and he said, you spent so much of your life hiding out in the studio, avoiding people. He said, I would prefer it if you didn't avoid people by building this big shrine. He said, the other thing is, he said, I don't really care about shrines. He said, you know, people like to build shrines. And he said, I understand that, that it makes them feel good. But he said, it does absolutely nothing for me or for God. We don't, we don't have any use for them whatsoever. He said, if, if that's what amuses you, I guess that's what you got to do. But he said, don't do it for me. Don't, don't deceive yourself in thinking that it's something that I want or need because I don't. I'm like, okay. Well, you shot down my idea. What's your idea of what would I do? And he said, love the person that you're with. And I said, okay, great. I'll do that. No problem. What do you want me to do? And he said, that I just told you what I wanted you to do. Love the person you're with. And I said, yeah, but after I do that, then what do you really want me to do? And he said, no, that is what I want you to do is love the person that you're with. And I said, well, that's, you know, that's simple enough. That's easy. I do that. And he said, oh, really? Um, well, that's what I want you to do. And he said, um, that's enough. And I said, um, how is it enough? And he said, if you do that, he said, you'll change the world. And I said, oh, you want me to change the world? And he said, Exactly. That's what I put you in the world in the first place, to change the world. And I said, well, you know, there's been a lot of people that have tried to change the world and they um, usually turn out really badly. You know, and I said, I can think of examples like um, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong, you know, all of them wanted to change the world and, you know, they made it worse. If I go back and try and change the world, you know, why, why isn't it possible that I could make like a lot of terrible mistakes and make the world a worse place? And he said, the way that I want you to change the world is by love the person that you're with. And I said, wait a minute, that's a contradiction. You want me to change the world, but you want me to just love the person that I'm with? And he said, yeah, that's, that's the plan. That's the big plan. And I said, I don't see how loving the person that I'm with is going to change the world. And he said, if you love the person that you're with, then they will go out 
and love the person that they're with, and they'll go out and love the person that they're with, and he said it'll be like a chain reaction, and people will love will conquer the world, and everybody will love one another. He said that's that's the, God's big plan, and I said it's not going to work. And he said, "Why well, won't it work?" And I said, "Because I love the person that I'm with. They walk across the street and get run over by a truck. You know, everybody gets angry and upset." And he said. He said, Brian, yeah, that, that happens, but um, it's really God's plan, and nothing's going to stop it. It's going to happen. And I said, well, even if you had like a million people, I don't think it's going to happen. And he said, there's more than a million people in the plan. He said, there's a lot of people in the plan. And I said, well... From what I know of the world, you don't have enough. And he said, well, actually, we have all the angels are in the plan. And he said, there's a lot of them. There's more angels than there are people in the world. And I said, so the angels are doing this? And he said, he said, there's millions of people, there's all the angels, and there's God. He said, it's inevitable. The plan is going to happen. And I said, if that's your plan, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll do it, but I just, I just don't really see much hope for it. And he said, well, because you just don't really know enough to see how it's going to happen. And okay. So my solution to everything is to love one another. And when I read the Bible and found out that that was um, written in the Bible as Jesus' commandment, Love one. This is my commandment that you love one another, and he said the same thing um, in other places, in other ways. But basically, that's the that's the program. I have tried to uh, be part of that program, so um, I have no. I personally have no big plan other than to um, be loving. The only the only fly in the ointment was is that I thought it was going to be easy and it turns out to be the hardest thing that I've ever done because um, it sounds so simple but it's really difficult it's easy it's like easy for me to love my mother because she was a really nice woman and she was a very loving woman so not hard to love someone who's really good and really loving but what do you do with someone who's um difficult or actually um, really nasty. I mean, th those are hard people to love. And what does it mean to love someone? I mean, sometimes to love someone means you need to incarcerate them. Yeah. And that doesn't, that's not like a lot of fun. Um, sometimes loving someone means you have to um, put as much distance between them and you as possible and tell them to never call you. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's not like, a lot of fun. I mean, it's, Loving people is um, sounds so simple, but it's very difficult.